Hi Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is going to be your general reading for November 2020. Uh, I won't be doing any more readings for the month of November until maybe like the last week. I do have my, the rest of my oral surgery is on the 11th coming up next week. So I'm going to be kind of out of pocket for a little bit. Um, so I just kind of wanted to get this to you and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to do a follow-up reading on those election readings that I was doing uh, back at the end of October because there's some developments that have occurred uh, that I think my card spoke about. So I kind of want to come back and um, briefly touch on those and then, you know, pull some more cards. So um, we're going to be using the Radiant White deck. We will be clarifying with Levita Sibila and we will be uh, following, wrapping up with the Golden Nostradamus card. Um, I've already done some shuffling and meditation on uh, your sign and glyph. And so I'm going to um, do one more shuffle. And then I'm going to turn the camera around. And uh, I don't even know what I'm saying, but here we go. <laughs> With the shuffle. And then I'm going to do one more rifle. And we will lay the cards, okay? Do you realize, Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising, that one more month and 2020 will be over? We're not out of the woods yet, not by a long, long shot, but um, we could at least try to put 2020 behind us. This has been one of the... Yeah, but I, I knew it was coming. I was warning y'all way back when, so... Okay, so here we go. Nine cards down. The Temperance card. Oh, wow. The Four of Swords. The King of Cups. The Page of Pentacles. Oh, wow. The Nine of Cups. Ooh, the moon card. So let's see. We just had our, our, uh, we've got a new moon coming up on the 15th. I don't know what sign that's going to be, and I'll look in just a second. So there it is. Wow. The ace of pentacles. Wow. Uh -huh. The knight of of cups and the magician wow I don't even know what to say about that You know what's being repeated here, and this is rather odd to me. I'll show you what's underneath the deck, but this is what's kind of odd to me. We know that this king is holding the, the Ace of Cups. As is this knight. And then here we have Temperance holding two cups. See that? Here we have the Ace of Pentacles. We have this page holding the Ace of Pentacles. Then we have this Moon Disc, which is almost somewhat similar, yeah? As is this with the crown in the back. Then we have this figure of the magician who has access to everything. Now, I don't know what this is. This is really an interesting reading. I know y'all hear me say that. I've got two ones. All aces are connected to the magician and all ones are connected to the number 10. So we're talking about changes, okay? Something new being presented, an opportunity to create something new. Um, so I have one, two, three court cards here. 
one, two, three major arcanas, two cups, two pen, oh no, wait, one, two, three cups, two pentacles, and a swords card. But yet, all of the, the only thing that's not here are the wands. And all of those things are contained in this magician card, except the one. It's the world card. Hmm. Well, I, you know, I'm rarely stumped um, for words. When it comes to reading cards, these are not speaking to me at the moment because there's a lot going on. And they are definitely trying to tell me something. <laughs> Indeed they are. Now we know, at least you know uh, from being with me from some time that pages and, and nights bring news and messages. This is something that's just beginning a, a new message. It's the start of a message, the start of some kind of communication, the start of learning something. But then it, it tends to, uh, once it evolves into a night, then it's got a little bit more meat on the bones, that message or that news, right? And it moves the situation along. And I would say that this is, whatever this news is, there's a high emotional quality to it. At least you're going to feel a particular way or it's going to, there's a high, emo, something you may be emotionally invested in. We see this nine of cups above it. This is the wish card. But then this moon on the other side of this, the moon can be a funny card. It can be about our dreams. It can be about our fantasies. But it could also be about our illusions. And it could be about our hallucinations. So, oh, um, not able to see things clearly. But for me, this is a timing issue. Something is, uh, I think, going to be triggered by this new moon on the 15th of November. Let me grab my phone and see if I can figure out um let me pull up my astrology software I thought I was really doing something when I got me an iPhone but I can't use any of my astrology software on here they don't they don't make it for um Mac so sucks to be me right now so what are we looking at the 15th and it is a new moon let me get to that day that new moon is going to occur oh wow Aha, uh -huh. in the sign of Scorpio, of other people's money. And isn't this something? It's going to be making, are those trines? Indeed they are. They're going to be making trines to Neptune, which is ruled by the moon. The south node is in Sagittarius at the moment. The North Node, aha, uh -huh. <laughs> is in Gemini, which is the sign uh, ruled by Mercury. You know, sometimes the cards speak funny. They do different, they speak differently. So uh, I, I'm doing my best to work my way through this. Let me see if um, this magician, as above, so below. You know, but if this guy's a magician and he's coming with the moon, we might want to 
be a bit cautious. But to me, this what this magician is saying is that the time has arrived. The time is now. That's literally what he's saying to me. He's telling me, okay, it's now. Bam, showtime. That's what he's saying to me. Um, and that's the thing about the magician. Um, great magicians aren't just born and they don't magically appear. They spend a lot of time studying and working and practicing their craft so that when they perform their tricks and their illusions, again, that word, the moon, it looks effortless, right? And everybody, ooh, and they, ah, oh, and how did he do that? Oh my God, I'm astounded. Hmm? But they spend years practicing those things. And to me, that is the most positive aspect of the magician. It is that you're going to take all of your tools and your resources, you're going to learn to use them, right? And then you're going to create whatever it is you want to create. Um... So the only thing, I mean, I only have one, two uh, hip cards along here along with this ace that I can look at. I can't look at these three people or these three cards to see what I can see about them being here with these uh, major arcana cards. And, and there really are no repeater numbers, even though this is a one and this is a one. That's a pip card. This is the one of a of a of the arc of the major arcana suit. It's almost in a sense like getting two aces, right? But this other ace could be anything. It could be another ace of pentacles, it could be an ace of cups, it could be an ace of swords, it could be an ace of wands. And we see all of these cups being bandied about, handled, displayed, right? We we see all of these cups. So, I don't know. I, I cannot speak for you, Virgo, but this month has been a trying month. Not that I've had any serious things. I've just had a lot of demand on my time. And, uh, and maybe this is also the thing saying that maybe, you know, you've been resting. You've been taking some time off away. Still doesn't tell me who this guy is. Okay. So let me take a look at this Four of Swords. Um, you know, if minds run, you know, a mile a minute. We're thinking, we're calculating, we're planning, we're doing all of these things, and maybe we just needed to take a to take a break, right? So let's see. The Four of Swords. Basically, it says when it appears with any ace, it indicates some long-term goals or plans need to be reassessed and reevaluated before proceeding. It may be telling you that you may not yet be involved with any long-term plans or considerations, but when they do arise, make efforts to check and recheck. That's my mom, and I can't talk to her right now. Mom, I have to call you back. Okay. Um... It says, um, next, with an ace, it may be telling you that you may not yet be involved with any long-term plans or considerations, but when they do arise, make efforts to check and recheck all aspects before proceeding as some reevaluations and amendments may be needed. And this may be telling you that you might not be able to move forward with this until after that new moon. Okay. Still doesn't tell me who that guy is. <laughs> right? Still don't tell me who that is. So now the nine of cups never tells me anything except that it is the wish card. I mean, that's really all it says. It has absolutely no other extraneous information as it relates to these two cards. None. Nine is the number of contentment. It is the wish card. Um, 
let me see what it says. If there's anything extra here, it is the card of attainment, accumulation, experience, and completion. It is a time when your actions will revolve around emotions and suggest a time of pleasure and satisfaction. It doesn't tell me anything else. Surrounded by major arcana cards, it is always a yes or a wish, implying that your wishes will come to positive fruition. And it brings a message that plans are materializing as you wish them to and your hard work is paying off. Of how success will come to you. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, the Ace of Pentacles, I'm just gonna take a look at it to see if it tells me anything. And then just out of um, curiosity, I'm going to see if there's anything extra this moon can tell me. I just have the sense that I'm gonna have to pull cards on it. Because there's nothing else here. There's nothing else here. First thing I'm going to do is look at the world card. Because it seems to me, I think there's a meaning when, when it of it when it comes at the beginning of or if it's the overall energy. Just one second, bear with me. No, it, 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 it does not tell me anything. Back it up to the moon. The moon tells that imagination triggers creativity and it may be inferring that you are more intuitive than you normally are at the moment so use this to your advantage. It is asking you to take note of any dreams or intuitive messages as your answers lay within you. This magician, this magician, focused will, creation, creativity, everything that's possible, manifestation, skill, and diplomacy, ability, confidence, communication, subtlety, self-confidence, work new beginnings, but also activity and overwork. Appearing upright, it indicates that you are heading in the right direction. Use your will, courage, and have faith in a positive attitude to bring about what you want and need. Appearing upright, it may be telling of a suitable new job or career opportunity. It can even represent assistance from spiritual guides. Therefore, all things are possible. Any obstacles that, that will present themselves will be overcome. It is an indication of an upsurge of energy and awareness of exciting new opportunities and unexplored possibilities. It asks that you always be concerned with making connection with others, remaining aware that your opinions are your own that the use of words is of great importance. Therefore, any correspondence should be entered into with high ethics. Basically, this card is speaking about a beginning. And 
So I want to take a look at both this King of Cups because even though this is a Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising, this could be us. And we are presenting like this because our intuition is running on high, okay? Uh, whatever our spirit guides, our intuition, those signs, those messages, I think it's kicked up a notch, a lot. Um, and uh, at least it is for me. And so that could simply be that. He may not be anybody at all but yourself, okay? I still say this moon is a timing uh, so, the start of November 15th to the end of the month. Uh, usually, you know, readings last a fortnight. The energy lasts a fortnight, and a fortnight is 14 days. So, from the 15th to the 29th, the 30th, into the 1st of December. Okay? Something is definitely ending for you. This cycle is whatever cycle we've been in before is ending, and a new one is about to begin. These two cards are cards of healing as well. Um, balancing your emotions with your desire. Um, taking a step back and, and taking that me time that you need. Um, I think this, this card is just an indication of being highly, highly psychically sensitive at the moment. I don't think most people realize that the majority of psychics and mediums are all Virgos. Even though... Uh, Virgos are known to be grounded in, I don't know, reality or numbers or minutia and the details, right? <laughs> they are the, one of the most psychic signs in terms of doing this job, performing this job. A lot of people don't know that. Viaggio. I'm just going to look at him. The Yardro. And the Riunioni. Now, remember I said... Watch out for this guy because he's coming with the moon. So this could be the idea that you are out traveling somewhere. Maybe you're supposed to meet somebody. Maybe you're supposed to, maybe you are traveling. But because this trip always speaks to a job travel or can speak to like a job interview, having to go somewhere for a job. It's basically, it's a travel card. <coughs> the Ardro is the thief or at least someone who has had a hard life, but also still spiritually uh, is poor or needy. Let me put it that way. We have two cards of meetings here, travel and a meeting. This can literally be a reunion, a rendezvous, but it could also just be where you meet somebody. Like, you, you know, it could be, again, a job interview. So I think on the one hand, you know, I don't know if the, you're supposed to, this person was to come, you were supposed to meet with this person. I just don't understand why the thief would show up to say that maybe he stole your opportunity or maybe he's trying to steal your opportunity or maybe when you travel, maybe this is telling you if you are traveling, you need to watch out for some smooth talking Lothario that... He may try to rob you or he may even get you drunk and you end up missing your thing. So keep your P's and Q's about you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. But that's reassessing. What do you really want? The Morte. The Gran Consolazione. And the lecherezza. The morte card is just that. It's the death card. It is an ending. It is a situation cut. That's our timing on the 15th. Why is it cut? Because either it was supposed to die a natural death, it was time for it to die out. If this was a situation in which somebody has... I don't know, maybe somebody's been dragging you down because they're an alcoholic or whatever. Um, and that situation is cut, then know it's time for it to be cut. But the death card in the Sibila is also this idea that a, a situation has come to an end, perhaps a natural end, um, or something has occurred. Someone has said something, they've done something, they've crossed a Rubicon, whatever they've said or they've done, it, it just can't be 
repaired. And so that situation is done now. So it's the cosmic scissors. It comes to just cut it. It's a done deal. What I find to be interesting on this side is that, you know, if these cards came out like this and said that all that you dreamed and that you hoped for, the Gran Consolazione, the card of great achievement and wealth and success and peace and all of those things that we all want in our lives. If this card fell after that, that tells me that all of that's been cut. See what I mean? It's cut and it'll never be the way that it was before. But instead, the cards have fallen like this. And everything that's back over this way, okay, or we can say that whatever this is that happened previously, this comes to cut that situation so that you can now focus <coughs> on all of the things that you want. It is a strange Lecherezza card uh, that kind of stands out to me. And the Lecherezza card is the card, it's called carefreeness, right? And basically, it is the idea that maybe you have misjudged someone or you misjudged a situation and it got you into a bit of trouble. But this is not something that is continual. It's not like being taken for a ride or taken advantage of for a long amount of time. This is just uh, the idea that on this one occasion, maybe you mischaracterized something, you misjudged someone, you miscalculated a situation but it's not the end of the world, okay? And I think what this tells me, and it could even be saying to you that whatever, if this guy messed up, he messed up for good. And maybe you can slide in there. <laughs> Look, <laughs> maybe you can slide in there and take his place, okay? So I think this can go either way. Um, somebody misjudged something. That's what that is. They miscalculate it. Now, sometimes this can be about finances and business deals, relationships, friendships. You misjudged the situation. Somebody did or they miscalculated the situation. But it's not something that is... Um, that's going to, like, mess everything up. It just happened. Okay? And now that you know reassess your plans okay and if this hasn't occurred to for you yet it may be coming up you recognize the situation or you all of a sudden in the middle of the month you find yourself in this situation remember these three cards remember you don't want to misjudge this there's a possibility you're going to misjudge this situation okay or the individual okay now that's a warning and this says, now that you know that, work your magic. <laughs> That's what it says. I mean, you know, it may turn out to be favorable for you now that you know. So formulate your question. Oh, that card flew out, so there it is. Finish formulating your question. I'm going to take a look and see what it is. Ah, well, okay. Well, let me know when you got it. the thorns the only certainty in our earthly lives is that they go on as a war in other words the battle continues right <laughs> no matter what happens so this says this card may be the harbinger of bad news or mourning or a simple difficulty that will cause pain however the wound will prick you like a thorn the wound will prick you like a thorn either in your serenity or in your body. But it doesn't say that it is something that is dealt the death blow. Okay? I don't see that. I see you making a whole new, creating something brand new out of this situation. So that's a lot to take in. There's a lot happening. But like I said, you know, this is just a general reading. For some of you, you don't recognize that story. Some of you don't even know the story is coming up, but it's coming <laughs> coming up. Um, you know, so you um, to gain better insight does require a personal reading. 
And so I'm going to leave you with that. Stay safe. Stay eagle-eyed and sharp-eared. Okay, Virgo, you can do it, Virgo peoples, y'all, homies, you can do it. All right, and so stay safe, take care, and namaste. Six feet and a mask, everybody.